Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Cherno. Now, this video was originally going to be Genesis. It was going to be me working on the first game that I ever made, porting it from Java to C++. However, I kind of started talking about like global variables, the static keyword, how to make them like in header files and use them elsewhere, how to ensure you only have one instance of them, which seems like an easy topic, but you'll see that it goes pretty deep and lots of people aren't really sure how they should go about creating global variables in C++ that can be used absolutely anywhere inside your application. And like, there's so many different keywords, like no keyword, then there's like static, there's inline, there's extern, like what do these all mean? So what I decided to do with this video is turn it into something that would hopefully just be like a standalone kind of video unrelated to the rest of the series that specifically focuses on how you can make global variables. So enjoy. So now all we really need to do is go through and create like every instance of Sprite, kind of like we're doing here in Java. Uh, but we're going to do that obviously here. Now we're inside a header file. So it's worth noting that when it comes to like our strategy to create a bunch of these sprites, it might seem like something really, really simple that no thought should be given to, but you actually do have to think about it a little bit funnily enough. Because the thing is, this isn't just like in Java where we can just create a bunch of static instances like this and we're kind of done and just make them public static. You know, they're inside the sprite class, like that's fine, right? Because at the moment we're not inside any kind of class, right? We're just inside kind of global space. And so what happens is if we create a sprite like this, then every single file that includes this header file, right? So like, we'll have to obviously include this in game. In fact, we can go ahead and do that now, right? If I include sprite.h inside game.cpp, obviously what's happening is this header file just gets copied and pasted in here. So now we're dealing with this stuff. So what happens is if we then include that sprite.h header file in like say the renderer or some other class, like the level class, because we'll probably need it in a bunch of different places potentially, right? then you can kind of see what we're doing. It's like we're creating sprites in every single place. So that's not really what we want to do because like you can see literally from the code that I've pasted here that like, what does this code do? Oh, well, it creates like a new sprite instance. We don't really want to do that because we want to have a global kind of variable. Now, how do you set up a global variable? Well, we could create it in like a single CPP file, like in game or make a variable, make a CPP file called like global variables or whatever. That's probably, I would advise against that. But anyway, like we could do something like that and then mark it as extern everywhere else so that we don't create copies of it. That's possible. Um, the other thing that you might think of is what happens if you make it static? Well. In fact, instead of me just talking, let's actually try this. But first, before we dive into all this exciting global variable stuff, I want to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. I'm sure a lot of you probably already know what Brilliant.org is by now, but if you don't, it's an amazing website filled with lots and lots of great courses on various STEM topics. Two particular like collections of courses I really love on Brilliant are their computer science courses. They can be really, really helpful for beginners. They can kind of teach you to start thinking more like a programmer. And because Brilliant's teaching is like so visual and engaging, like they'll quiz you and all of that, they'll give you these widgets you can play with to see how stuff works. It's just a much more fun kind of interactive learning experience. The other area I love are their math courses because they go really, really deep from the basics like everyday math all the way down to like, you know, linear algebra and calculus that can be really useful if you're making games or rendering. And once again, these courses are presented really visually, interactively, and they'll also quiz you to make sure you're paying attention. Now, what's great about all this is you don't have to take my word for it. Brilliant have a 30 day free trial that you can use to check out their entire platform. Just go to brilliant.org slash the channel link will be in the description below and check it out for yourselves. And if you do like it, Brilliant have been nice enough to offer the first 200 subscribers 20% off an annual membership. Huge thank you as always to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So if I include Sprite in here, because this would be a good practical example, I think. If I include Sprite.h in here, and you can see what Sprite is, it creates this Sprite. Um, and then I also go to like Renderer, and I include Sprite. Let's just try and compile this. I rebuilt it accidentally, but let's just try and compile it and we'll see what happens. All right, so you can see that we got an error, and it says one or more multiply defined symbols found. And these C++ errors, like, I feel like I need to create a handbook of how to deal with C++ errors because there's there's lots of common errors that I still to this day remember how difficult I found them when I was a beginner. But this is this is a very common one. So one or more multiply defined symbols found. So Sprite, right? It's telling us that specifically, right? It's this instance of Sprite. It's called Sprite. It's inside the Genesis namespace. This here is the type, right? Or this here, I guess, is the type. Uh, and then this 
is specifically the variable that is already defined in game.obj. So what's happening is you can see over here that renderer.obj is trying to, basically we're trying to compile the renderer and we notice that actually we've also, oh, okay, let me back up a little bit. We're actually not trying to compile anything. We're linking here, right? So this is a linking error. Um, what's happening is we're trying to link, you know, renderer.obj to create this Genesis executable. But then we notice that, hang on a minute, there's a symbol called Genesis Sprite that exists already in game.obj. And we see it here in renderer.obj. So what this dot .obj is, by the way, is every single CPP file that we have gets compiled into an OBJ file during the compilation stage. By the way, if you're not sure how the C++ compiler and linker works, I have some videos up there that's part of the C++ series that cover like compiling, linking, how C++ even works. That explains all of this. I made them like six years ago. Hopefully they're still <laughs> relevant, but I think they should pretty much cover everything. And, and it explains this kind of OBJ stuff and how the compiler generates this stuff in detail. But basically, um, all of the CPP files become OBJ files in the, in the compilation stage, but then they have to be linked together into like an executable in this case, into a program, right? And during that stage, it notices like because they're all compiled individually, during the compilation stage, it doesn't see that, oh, you've got multiply defined symbols because they're in different CPP files and they're all sent kind of in parallel really to the compiler. They're all independent from each other. But then when they get linked together, it's like, hang on a minute, that already exists. So therefore you get a linking error and specifically you get an error where um, you know, it tells you that this is a multiply defined symbol because it's found this Genesis sprite twice um, or well, more than once could be many times, but in this case, it's twice. And this might seem like a really weird error because again, if you look at sprite.h, it doesn't look like we've done anything really malicious or really weird, right? It's like, well, I just wanted to create a global variable, but you can't, that's not how it works because this gets copied and pasted into every CPP file. And suddenly like you can't have a global variable called sprite in two places because you're trying to create two global variables with the same name. That's kind of in a way like writing this. That's really what's happened. It's just that when you do it this way, it's obviously in the same file. So therefore it's sent to the compiler in one go and the compiler can be like, that's wrong. But if it's in different files, it's still the same story because it's a global variable, but it's the compiler can't see that. So the linker kind of picks it up. But anyway, so what do we do? Um, well, one solution to this is to make Sprite static. If we look at this, um, that works. And unfortunately to a lot of people, that might be the solution. Like you might be like, oh, excellent, let's move on. And the interesting thing is like, if I did make a Sprite here called like grass, right? And it was set to like some coordinate and I put static here and I compile it and I just move on with my life, your program would run correctly. There's nothing like the data is set correctly. You've set it to two seven. Cause remember at the end of the day, what is a Sprite instance here? What are we doing by creating grass? We're just creating like the numbers two and seven in memory next to each other. Like contiguously, we have two 32 bit integers, eight bytes total of memory next to each other, two and seven. That's what we've done. So in that sense, your data would be correct and everything would work. However, what you've done is by adding static here in like a global context, right? So we're not within a class. This isn't like, you know, static inside a class like that. It's static kind of globally, just inside the Genesis namespace. What that does is if you recall what static means in a global context like this, it means that this symbol has internal linkage, which kind of means that it's only visible to the CPP file that it resides in. So in other words, when I include this in here, yeah, what that's doing is it's including my sprite inside here statically. So I kind of have something like this going on. This variable is now private to game.cpp. But what do you think happens when we include sprite.h in like renderer.cpp like we did? The same story. And what's that doing? It's creating a kind of private internal variable inside this file. So what I'm trying to say is that we're not creating global variables here. We're actually creating a separate copy of this grass variable, this grass kind of instance of this struct, if you want to think about it that way. We're creating one copy per file, per CPP file, that we include this header file in. So if we include this in 10 different CPP files, we actually have 10 separate instances of the grass class, which really all that means, like all, all this word of instance is a bit annoying because that kind of, you know, I think of object-oriented programming when I think of instance and like class instance and stuff. All it really means is that 
this va this value two comma seven these two these two unsigned integers you have them in ten different places in your memory yeah ten different copies of this grass variable because every translation unit every cpp file that includes this header file has its own private copy of this variable which you can see why it would work though right because well, first of all, they're all unrelated, so the link is not going to be like, oh, you've already got this defined, because it's private to that CPP file, so therefore it doesn't get linked kind of cross translation unit. But also it would work because the data is correct. Every instance of that grass tile, or of this grass sprite, will in fact have 2 and 7 as its X and Y. So of course they'll all work. But it's a bit wasteful in the sense because you're why are you creating 10 different copies of this? And I guess that's kind of why, you know, in a way, it seems like the correct solution to the problem, but you would never know unless you actually like have C++ experience or you understand how this works already, which again, to a beginner, you probably wouldn't. You'd think that you've solved the problem. Oh yeah, I just had to make, I just had to add static. And that's kind of what I had before in Java or whatever. So it's like, I guess it's the same. No, it's not the same. It would be the same if you put it into a class. Another solution, by the way, might be to make, and I don't really advocate for this, it could be a class or a struct, we could call it sprites, for example, and then we could actually have stuff inside here. So you'd kind of address this by just doing sprites grass, right, as long as it's like static, and you actually have to make it inline static if you wanted to declare it like that, and you have, you have to have C++17 for this. But like that's possible and that's different because if we have it a static variable inside a class, there is only truly one instance of it. Yeah, so that does what you think it might, probably. But this does not. This is not the same. This is like the C kind of language in a way. It's not even like objects or, you know, static in the in the sense of an object oriented language because it's kind of from C, which is not an object oriented programming language. So then what's the solution to this? Well, um, the real solution that I would use here is instead of static, use the word inline. And by the way, if you're ever unsure of, of how this works, like I'm making a pretty bold claim here, right? Like we have a grass instance per translation unit. But how do we know that? How do we know that that is in fact true? Like, you know, we are computer scientists at the end of the day. We like to see results. We like to see evidence. We like to perform experiments. We have like a, a hypothesis, but we would like to see that hypothesis be true, right? I would like to test this is what I'm trying to say in a fancy way. So how do I, how can I do that? Well, I can think of two ways you could do that. The first way is quite simple. Inside the renderer class, what I can actually do is I can ask for that sprite, which I think I just, yeah, I just called a grass. By the way, what I would probably do is I'd probably add a namespace here called sprites or something, just to kind of uh, add some kind of context to this so you don't have a global variable called, you know, genesis grass, because that's a bit weird. Is it a tile? Is it a sprite? Like, you don't know. So if I have, if I have that, I can access it like so, yeah? What I can do is I can just print out the memory address of that particular variable. So I could cast it to a void point. I don't think I have to cast it to a void point. I think the uh, C out will just print it as that, but void pointer is kind of casting it to a typeless pointer and pretty much every logging library will be able to print that because really kind of what you're doing by doing that is you're casting it to like, in this case, 64-bit architecture to like a UN64T, which of course everything can print, but let's just try and print this. Um, and then I can add like an end line or a new line character or whatever I want. So I'll add this code here. And then inside game, I'll also add the same thing. I'm doing that both in the constructor, right? And in here, for some reason, I have to include IO stream, whatever. So game constructor, which includes sprite, has that. And exact same code inside the renderer constructor as well. So if the variables are exactly the same, if they're the same instance, they would have the same memory address, right? So let's try and run this. Okay, our, our game is running. And what do you know? We have two different memory addresses. Now they're pretty much side by side in memory, not quite, but close, but they are obviously different. Now, one other way you could test this is if you add a constructor to Sprite, because we'd expect this object to only be constructed once. Let's go ahead and add this in, x, y, it doesn't really matter. We don't need to set the variables for this example, but I'll just write Sprite constructor. So let's run that and let's include IO stream. All right, look, twice. Yeah, so we're clearly constructing two different instances of it and we clearly have two different memory addresses of it. 
So, and that's because I've included it in two files. What if I then grab, you know, sprite.h, and let's include it also in Genesis app. I'm not going to bother with the print, with the printing its memory address, but you should see the constructor called three times. So every time you include it, it actually creates that variable. You can see that we've validated that, which is great. It feels good, right, as a computer scientist to actually test something and see the real result. That's what you guys should really get into the habit of doing, by the way. Don't believe anything I say. Test everything. <laughs> so now then, yeah, if I present an alternative method, so like the solution to this, by the way, or what I would do anyway, is I would make this inline, which don't ask me why this is a, an error. Uh, it's not actually, actually a real error, but Visual Studio is just like, whoa, what are you doing? Okay, whatever. Might have to restart Visual Studio. <laughs> and what inline will do is it will basically tell... It, it Inline is a magical keyword that does a lot of different things, and I don't want to talk about all the different, you know, things that it does here. What inline means in this case is that you're basically stating that there should be only one instance of this. Like we can't have multiple symbols defined as this. No matter how many translation units it's included in, the simple explanation to this keyword in this case is there's only one instance of this, right? That's it. It's here. It's as if this was included in a single CPP file is kind of what you're saying. And so now if I run it with that inline keyword, check that out. Constructor called once, memory addresses are now equal. So now we truly only have one instance of this. And obviously we're able to validate that and actually test that by printing every time we construct the sprite and also checking out the memory addresses of the two different CPP files, the two different translation units, trying to access that kind of one variable. So now with that knowledge in mind, we can go through and obviously add in all of our kind of sprites and we can relax knowing that there is in fact only going to be one instance of each sprite across our entire program. So yeah, that's kind of like the global variable situation. Oh, there is one more thing. As I mentioned, there are some other ways that you can kind of create global variables. You can just define them in like one CPP file but without the static keyword, so it's still kind of global, and then use the extern keyword in other CPP files to reference that, kind of to indicate when you're actually compiling that one file that it is in fact for external linkage. That's what the extern keyword kind of does. So it kind of will tell the compiler, yeah, the variable's not here, but that's cool. Trust me, when it comes to the linking stage, it will be somewhere else. But if you did want to try that out for yourselves, like it's literally just, just make a variable in global space in a CPP file, like sprite grass, that's, that's it. Type it outside of any function in a CPP file. And then in another CPP file, type extern sprite grass. And then obviously don't like initialize it with two and seven or whatever you're initializing it with. And that will also kind of function as a global variable. I do do that sometimes. if. I want the variable to be like a little bit more private. So I'm not kind of, I'm not kind of even putting it in any header files because it's kind of almost internal to a CPP file, but yet I, I need another CPP file to actually also access it. And so I'll define it kind of without the extern keyword in the CPP file that owns it in a way. And then if something else needs to reference it, it will kind of use the extern keyword to get that. I don't know, if that's confusing, maybe I'll make a video about extern as well. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit the like button, check out brilliant.org slash the link in the description below, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.